had 14 inches of rain in two events last week. Um, where we had the strips in place, it did hold the soil. I was amazed as to how much soil, soil can be lost in a huge rain event and how well the strips actually worked, even though they hadn't even been uh, established for very many years yet. When the prairie strips came along, I said, this is what I can really get excited about because I want to keep all the soil on our land as much as possible. So STRIPS, it stands for Science-Based Trials of Row Crops Integrated with Prairie Strips. And what we mean when we talk about STRIPS is this new developing conservation practice of prairie strips where we're taking small patches of prairie and actually integrating them into the row crop field. So if you think about a regular row crop field, think about little you know, strips of prairie that are interlaced into the corn or soybeans. We recognize that there are very complex conservation issues that are affecting wildlife and the use of natural resources, including global climate change, invasive species, energy and water demands, and these are issues that agencies and organizations individually and state by state can't address themselves. They have to work together over a large region and over long periods of time to really make traction against some of these large-scale cl complex problems. At Neil Smith National Wildlife Refuge, where we began the STRIPS experiment, we're looking at four different actual treatments. And in the first treatment is just what you usually see in Iowa, just corn and soybean, you know, farmed on a two-year rotation. And that's our baseline. And then we have three treatments that we compare to this baseline. One is a watershed with 10% of the area put into prairie strips. And all of the strips in this case are located at the base of the watershed. So they capture the water as it's running off the hill slope in this 10% at the bottom. Another treatment where again we have 10% of the area in prairie strips, but we have multiple st prairie strips running along the contour. And then a fourth treatment which has 20% prairie strips. So again, 20% of the area in prairie and in multiple prairie strips running along the contour. Right now, we're, um, there's a lot of discussion in Iowa about the Iowa Nutrient Reduction Strategy, and we think that uh, kind of this prairie strips can be a tool that farmers can use uh, to, to help reduce um, nutrient loss from their agricultural fields. So the fundamental hypothesis that we're, that we're researching at the STRIPS experiment at Neil Smith National Wildlife Refuge is in this hypothesis of disproportionate benefits. The idea that, that you can get a whole bunch of benefits by just reintegrating a little bit of this native prairie back into the agricultural ecosystem. We don't need to put all of Iowa back into prairie, but if we can be really strategic and put a little bit of prairie on the right spots in the landscape, that we can actually harness most of the benefits that you would get associated with large patches of prairie. And I think overall the goal, you know, and which would be a little bit more long term when we initially started, was really to try to look at if we can develop new knowledge uh, about practices that farmers can implement uh, to reduce some of the environmental impacts of, of what we're seeing uh, with our uh, row crop agriculture. We actually implemented the experiment at Neil Smith National Wildlife Refuge in 2007. 2008 was the first year that we began really collecting data at the site. And we've actually recorded some pretty phenomenal numbers. Here's a snapshot of what we've been able to measure. We've recorded a 95% reduction in the amount of sediment. We've also seen a 90% reduction in the amount of phosphorus and an 84% reduction in nitrogen moving off those watersheds with the prairie. And keep in mind that sediment Phosphorus and nitrogen are three of Iowa's four most common water pollutants. We've also recorded phenomenal differences in the biodiversity in the row crops treatments with prairie strips. So we've recorded four times the amount of native plant diversity, over two times native bird abundance and species richness, and we've also seen all of the native pollinators in our, in our treatments that have the prairie strips as are found in a nearby sites of prairie reconstruction. This is uh, something that there's an opportunity for really minimal costs in comparison to other, some of the other structural conservation practices um, with a lot of benefits. So a lot of bang for the buck. Well, in production agriculture, 
um, the land is our base. So when we see practices that can have an impact uh, on the land, using a small amount of land and uh, leaving the majority of it for production agriculture, anything that can give those disproportionate benefits of a small uh, amount of land is a practice that we're interested in. If we had 10% of the landscape in prairie strips, there would be so many amazing benefits for um, our soils, our streams, and then also uh, birds and insects, you know. Um, you could really see just this amazing um, blend of, of biological diversity. So the STRIPS team has also conducted a survey where we've asked Iowans what their priorities are for agricultural policies and programs. The type priority for policies and programs in Iowa is drinking water quality. Other issues include water quality for aquatic life, rural job opportunities, flood control, water quality for recreation, game wildlife habitat, reducing greenhouse gases, tourism opportunities, crop production, habitat for non-game wildlife. One thing that really sort of strikes me is that the STRIPS project addresses all 10 of these. You know, there's a, a multitude of benefits and you know, every farm is different and every farmer and how you can use uh, the flexibility of, of these strips to meet their needs. We want to help put more native tall grass prairie back on, the land, on Iowa's landscape. And farms are a great place to start. There's a lot of options, there's a lot of ways to plant it, there's a lot of ways to manage it, and um, a lot of different kinds of prairie that you could have on your place. Science has now showed us that these strips, uh, where we have the patches of, of prairie, are kind of like a subterranean food plot. They really do give all the, the microorganisms and the things in the soil a place to, to, to live and habitat for them, just like they do for my pheasants and things like that above the ground. One of the things I'm really excited about with the STRIPS project is this idea that we can actually blend conservation and production on the same acres. It's always been in the state that we felt like we have needed to have either or. And really the science is showing us that we can, we can have both. It's a great project because it's interdisciplinary. There aren't enough of these interdisciplinary projects going on. The opportunity that we see with STRIPS and with other agricultural conservation practices that can affect both wild, water quality and wildlife is that they bring together three communities that really have may have had some difficulty um, di in dialogue before, and that's the wildlife, uh, the wildlife biologists the agricultural community and uh, the water quality and the water users. And in addition, there's also the opportunity to bring in uh, energy with the creation of biomass and biofuels out of uh, perennial grasses. Farmers are coming forward and wanting to do this on their own lands. How cool is that? So I'm a native Iowan. Uh, I believe that agriculture is an important part of our are the fabric of Iowa, but I'd really like to see ways that we can diversify that landscape. We overlook the fact that farmers don't always need an economic incentive to do things. I have seen the destruction nature can it cause, and if there's a better way, we're interested. I can see how prairie strips can fit in as part of an entire conservation system. You know, farmers love technology, and this is just another tool in the toolbox and gives them you know, another option for their farm. It's not like any other conservation practice I've ever um, encountered. We have buffer strips and waterways and terraces, and those have served a purpose for a long time. Um, but what's been unique about the strips, pro STRIPS project is that it incorporates the native species. I'm always looking for ways to, uh, conservation methods to keep that soil in place. And this is a, a very interesting, low-cost way of doing erosion control, as well as benefiting a lot of other uh, species out there, such as pollinators. I think uh, there's a lot of potential with this program from a water quality and soil erosion standpoint. You can see the, how it's going to help the entire system. I think we always have to be looking at new ways of tackling the conservation problems. And I'm really excited that we have a growing group of, of farmers now who are uh, volunteering to implement this practice on their land and I think that's going to be a really important step in the process of, of you know looking at how this practice works on a, on a working farm not just on a research uh, scale.
There's only a certain number of natural resources and we've abused them enough. And so we really, really need to preserve the resources that are here. This is one practice that we're hopeful for. We think this is a really good way to blend agricultural productivity and conservation on the land and um, make uh, every Iowa farmer who adopts this um, really part of the solution. Agriculture is always changing and producers are interested in preserving the land. Hopefully we can move this forward and uh, concentrate and focus this pro pro project and the strips around a lot of more of the conservation areas. We think the strips project is a really neat way that farmers can provide um, local water quality benefits, benefits to pollinators and soil health, as well as protecting the water quality of um, downstream water users. I just want to leave this piece of property, 160 acres, far better off than when we first moved here. Anybody who, who farms does not want their soil to leave their ground. My business model is is based on long-term sustainability. So for me, I like it. I guess my only challenge is figuring out where I want to put the next strips.